All right, everyone, welcome back to the City of Smack YouTube channel. It is day six of City of Smack live at Worlds. We have a jam-packed show today. Uh, it's getting to that point of the World Championships where people are done competing and they're hitting our phones being like, when's my turn on the show? And we're more than happy to have all these wonderful athletes to speak with. On today's show, we've got Freddie Crittenden, We've got Valerie Allman coming on. We've got Kira McGeehan. We've got Yard Nagus. We've already got tomorrow all booked out. Uh, so this has been a ton of fun. We couldn't have done it without the support of ASICS for, you know, backing us and all of our coverage of the world championships from, you know, supporting us at these massive group runs that we had this morning, the, uh, you know, just our, the ability to have a big team here. So that is why the City Smag YouTube channel is popping with a ton of interviews, all these shows, all these newsletters, these articles. We're, we're not sleeping, uh, but we do it because we love the sport. And so thanks to ASICS for supporting us. When we come back from this break, we will have Freddie sitting down with our very own Jasmine Todd and Caitlin Hutchison. ASICS, sound mind, sound body. 365 days. One year until history is made. A lifetime of preparation that will lead us to the ultimate test. 365 days until we show the world what a sound mind and a sound body can do. See you in Paris. Stability never felt better. The first five miles, you're just getting warmed up. From downtown to uptown, you'll take the scenic route. Tired legs? You'll feel fresh. From first steps to final strides. Steep hills, super steep hills, long runs, even longer runs. Whatever comes, you can run through it. With stability, cushioning, and more comfort than ever in every step. Because nothing feels better than the adaptive stability and premium comfort of the Gel Keanu 30 shoe. Hey y'all, it's me and Jasmine out here with the one and only. Who are you? Oh, <laughs> I don't even know who I am, but I know who this guy is. <laughs> we are on the show with Freddie Crittenden. I feel like I keep pronouncing your last name wrong. Can you can you tell it's me? It's a couple ways. Crittenden or Crittenden. How your parents pronounce it? Crittenden. Okay. Crittenden. Yeah. Crittenden. I'm probably going to mess that up again, but I love you real bad. It's you know this though. <laughs> um, <laughs> if y'all don't know who the Freddie is, he just got fourth place at the World Championships. Everybody Dude. give him a round of applause. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And he is on the show with us today to talk to us about how cool he is and everything else you ever want to know about this guy. So, I mean, not only fourth place, but this is your first world outdoor championship. Yep. And I, don't, I just got to let you know how proud I am of you because this is your first <laughs> time making it onto the world outdoor stage, which is huge. And then to come in fourth place, like what what were your emotions and feelings I mean, obviously, of course, everyone has the aspirations of getting that medal, but a fourth place for your first time being on a world stage, like... I'm hype. I'm, I'm not even going to lie. I'm just... Like, <laughs> as you should. I'm super happy. Like, I can't complain about anything. I mean, there's a little piece of, like, 600s. Like, come on. <laughs> but, like, I'm not mad at all. I'm here. The goal was to get here, and I'm here. So I'm, I'm happy with that. I think you went above and beyond... Mm. So what is the difference of making a world indoor team versus being on an outdoor team? Um, well, I haven't been on an indoor team yet. Okay. I've been on like a bunch of like outdoor teams like Pan Ams and U23. Like I think yes. I've been on five or six, yeah, five yeah. or six like smaller teams. Um, so this one definitely hit different. <laughs> it definitely hit different. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a good different. You know, it's, it's, it's exciting. Way more exciting. 
So talking of like way more exciting and stuff like that, Jasmine always likes to ask like, how was the the Team USA hotel? Because she she was you know she she been on a couple teams before, so she, so she know how y'all get down. But I want to know what your experience is like being out here with the team and whatever y'all got going on. You know that's the thing. Like I I, I was on other teams and I was definitely interested to see how they would like treat us. You know how they would like cater us and this and that. And I was like, this is world. This is the biggest. Race of the year, just world championship. Absolutely. They gotta pull out all of the stops. So I'm like, yo, we about to have our own rooms, like yeah. hot tubs oh, in the God. bathroom. I'm like, so sorry. I'll, I pulled up to that room. <laughs> like, it was so, somebody in there. I'm so sorry you thought that. Well, yeah, I don't. Yeah, well, I already knew I was gonna have a roommate. So yeah. I was like, maybe we both gonna be. <laughs> Wait, you know what I mean? Get to choose your roommates. No, we did. Oh, we did. Okay. We did. I was like, Dang, and and the hotel was the lobby was nice, but you go up the elevator and you like come out of the elevator. It's like okay. Dang. At least it's in Budapest, though. Yeah, we were right, okay, in Budapest. Right, you know, right, it, was right, cool. right. it was cool. Um, and I was removing my homie, Brandon Carnes. He runs the 4x1. Okay, one for tomorrow. sure, for sure. Okay. Oh, now yeah. you just okay. dropped a secret. Dropped a Is that a secret? No, it's not a secret. Oh, okay, I think bet. it's much of a secret. For sure, for I think, sure. I think it's, it's other legs that's... <laughs> Ooh. That are, yeah. Oh, yeah, so you're yeah. going to be on it? Side. Oh, no. I heard you was going to oh. be on it. Somebody gave me a phone call last night. It's like, Freddie didn't do it so good in the Would you run on a 4x1 if they asked you to? I'll run on it, but I'm gonna be slow. <laughs> so you telling me I'm gonna be real in fourth place at a world championship in the, one of the most competitive events is is that slow? I can hurdle fast. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta have the obstacles in front of you. I can hurdle fast. We do testing on my team and I'm not I'm like the thirty meter sprint. I'm not the fastest thirty meter in our little small little Phoenix track club team. But I mean <laughs> So this is what we got to do. You put some if hurdles we, in there. We good, though. If we put you on the second or the last leg. Uh, what? You, no, 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 no. What? You about to add hurdles in front of them? Yeah. <laughs> what yeah, you, you, you ain't even you, let me finish my you, sentence. <laughs> That's she already knew where you was going, though. She <laughs> already. This is, we, just put the, we just put the hurdles out there. You be straight. No. We can put them on the curve, too, but I ain't never seen you run four hurdles. If so we going to put him somewhere, he'd have to be third leg. Okay, we, so. We, 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 we put Freddie at third leg. On the heart? On the heart? You would have to be on a curve. because. That that's not our strongest leg, but I mean, a team USA. No offense to y'all, it, that that is a strong leg on our team. But if we got to put a relay together, the only place yes. you fit would be placed at third leg. Dang, she said. She said the you were strong enough. We, we would have leg. to. We'd have to <laughs> cut you to score somebody. <laughs> We I'm gonna be real. That's that, it, it is what it is. I, I'm not gonna tout and sit here and say I can run. I can run a fast leg. I'm not competitive in the sprints, but you put some hurdles in there, then we got we got a conversation for sure. I'm not even gonna stunt. So I see you in here swagged out, but okay. I went and saw a tweet about how you've came a long way from wearing Hollister and basketball oh, shorts yeah. at track practice yeah. to now you are a fourth time of four fourth in the world at our world championships mm-hmm. man like tell me about your journey man i've it's we've come a long way a long I, i'll never i mean i don't even want to put this in here but like you can find some pictures online of high school I'm all right let me go look. get my phone oh, chill, real quick chill, <laughs> chill, 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 chill. <laughs> but like it was just it was bad i had i had glasses <laughs> And I was one of those dudes. I don't want to get no new glasses. Like, you walk with you cut you put the tape on them. I'm gonna just keep the tape broken. and hot glue. As you should. <laughs> That's how my, me and my daddy used to do. My high school was like a smaller high school. We we really didn't have like a big like track and field program, so they didn't even have like track singlets. But like one me, I wore like a wrestling uniform in one of the races. What? Was, I was one of those. That's kind of close though. That's close enough to it. A oh, wrestling uniform. Wrestling, wrestling unitard. Maybe I was trying to bring it back. Just nah, for one race? Nah. I don't know. It, it was bad. It was bad. You're like, not even like, okay, he looks crazy. Like, no, he looks crazy. Like, was it too small for you? or It, just it was, was like str- small and too long at the same time. You know how they have like the super long, <laughs> yep. uh, super long uh, straps? It like, it like went down under here. Uh, like, <laughs> what? Oh, nah, bro. Taco meat chest. Oh, my ch- taco meat chest hair was, yeah, it was bad. I need to see a picture of this. No, we're not doing that. Mac, <laughs> find the picture. Is he looking right now? Okay, good. Okay, like, yeah. Mac is over there trying to find it secretly so he can post it <laughs> on the YouTube. Yeah, um. it was bad. It was bad. So, yeah, to, to look like that and then to, to like, have, like, the, the Oakley glasses on. I'm not sponsored by them, but, like, I got Oakley shades. Oakley, you hear this? He's I'm, not sponsored, not sponsored by, by you by yet. Them. But, yeah. And then to have the Team USA and, like, some reason this year the arm sleeves like kind of spoke to me 
I like Ooh. had my first race of the year and I wore arm sleeve and I like ran fast and I was like, well, I guess I'm wearing arm sleeves this year. And then um, I have a, a, a jewelry sponsor. They like gave me free jewelry to oh. wear. That's why I have this stuff. On. Okay, come on, chains. Yes, I mean, sir. Come on, bracelet. Come on. I mean, earrings. it eat though. It eat yeah. though. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't know. I just feel like I, I I look a lot better on the track than I did the hot glue and the the rest of the guitar. So I think we definitely have come a long way in terms of like looking presentable on the track. So if so. you could tell yourself your younger self something, what would you tell your younger self? Um. Find a woman that help you look better than you do. <laughs> <laughs> so shout out to his wife. Yeah, shout out to my wife. To yes. Wife. Yes. 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 We talk about your yes. wife. You just recently got married. Yep. Yep. Like, yep. Why whole married man out yep. here? Ooh. 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 Yep. That plan with yep. the boy. Is wifey here? Yeah. yeah, she's here. We just we just um enjoyed the um the bathhouse here in in, in in Budapest. Was I think that like your guys' little honeymoon vibes. Um, <laughs> kind of, kind of, it did feel like we were on a little vacation. It really did. Okay. I mean, it was only a couple of days here, but like, it was nice to just kind of like decompress, decompress. Yeah, exactly. Just decompress and just enjoy a couple of days here in Budapest. Yeah. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah. yeah. Like, Wife life. How was her, do you know like what her reaction was when you got fourth? Um, well, she knew, she knew I, cause the, the plan was just to, to make the final and be competitive type of thing. Absolutely. And she was kind of relieved and she, she was feeling how I was feeling. Like, I just want to make the final type of thing. Um, we were both, we both had the nerves for the semifinal. Cause it's like kind of on a chopping block. If you don't perform here, Dude, no, you perform. nothing matters, you know? So <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> you gave it your all. I that did. Semifinal. I did. Mm -hmm. That was a very like high emotion. Like when I tell you, I usually, I've been in so many situations and I've been running for so long that like nerves don't really like get to me. But that semifinal, you were, my <laughs> neck was hot. <laughs> I felt my heart beating in my face. I was at the line like, yo. My like, dude was about to break out in hives. It was, I've never been that nervous in my life. But I'm, I'm very happy that like those moments, like they like drive me and I can like do what I did. You know what I mean? Like it, it just, it just brought something else out of me. And I, I was like, yeah, yeah, I was hyped. Was yeah. there a way that you calmed yourself down in that moment? Um, I usually just try to focus on one thing. Like, like if my heart is beating too fast, I like have to breathe slow. And then when it's time to race, it's just like focus on one cue. Either like get out hard or like be aggressive. Like something specific that I have to like focus on, and that kind of just like helps me block out everything else. So. So speaking yep. of racing and you know just being one of the fastest guys in the world because <laughs> no big deal. so casual right <laughs> no big deal at all like I don't know I just think I just remember um, I think it was after the semifinal but you were noticing that like me and T were like trying to like sit on the ground you were like I'm the man he's like I made it to the final I'm gonna get y'all a chair yeah and so he <laughs> tried to like hop over like I don't know where he went uh, he came back and he was like I told y'all I'm the man and he just <laughs> the chair oh my over gosh. like the mix zone barrier and we're like okay <laughs> and then natalie from usa i was like looking at him like where did he just go <laughs> i'm like what the hell is going on so i just want you to tell me like how it feels to like not only like think that you're the man but like prove that you're the man well <laughs> i don't i don't think i'm the man <laughs> um i don't know i i think it's um it's, it's definitely a process. I think for me, when things line up and, and I'm feeling a certain way, it's like, okay, um, if this is in place, this is in place, this is in place, like, nobody's stopping me. You know what I mean? Like, and, and, I, and it's kind of bad because it, it, sometimes it's, it is fragile. Like, if there's something that pops up and I'm like, okay, that throws off things, then I don't have that mentality. There's, like, some caution or, like, some hindrances or, like, some, something that's holding me back. But, like, when I do, and I felt like that this whole weekend – when everything is hidden and I feel like I checked off all the boxes, it's like, I'm unstoppable right now. There's like, I don't, stop who it, I don't care who it is, you know. And with, with, with the C, I, I literally <laughs> prelims and semis, I was like, y'all been standing out here all day? Y'all been doing these interviews with people? And they were like, yeah, we've been here all day. I was like, <laughs> you want me to get you a chair? I was like, <laughs> and, and like behind the scenes, like when I'm walking, like getting ready for the race and stuff, I see empty chairs everywhere, like. 
Come they're on, not using them I chairs. Mean, not only are you the fourth fastest man in the hurdles, but you're also a gentleman. So yeah, no, like yeah, you, 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 you pick the right one. Yeah, you pick the right is one. Is not dead, you guys. <laughs> okay. Chivalry is not dead. Yeah, I just yeah. think it was so, hilarious how like you just like walk oh, but, through the door. I'm gonna get y'all a chair. I got y'all. Where is he going? And Natalie's like, I don't think he's supposed to do that. I was like, nah, nah. I got a bib. I got a bib. He's like, I'm the bib. I'm the bib. So look, we're uh, we're talking about all this right now, but let's get into the final a little bit. So I know you were saying in the semifinal, like you were super, super nervous. Mm-hmm. Were you nervous during the final too? Because you was up there with the big dogs mm-hmm. and you are one yourself. So how did that feel? Um finals, I wasn't I wasn't nervous at all. Um mm-hmm. I think you, you I think it's one of those things like prelim, you you got the nerves, you like you ready to go, you like hold on to all this energy. Prelims, you get a lot of the nerves out. Semi is like, oh, I've been waiting all day. i I woke up at seven, I don't run till eight. 805 <laughs> nerves <laughs> so then once the, the the semi was off it's like okay we good i'm good i'm good to go i'm running fast like i'm feeling good like everything is hitting you know so when the final came it was like i'm here now i don't got nothing to lose i'm in between my dog daniel I'm in between my, <laughs> and grant like i was like i know they're gonna get out so if i get out i'll be good i'll be good. straight you know um so i was like as long as I do this, this, and this, I can, I can win, or I can medal, or I can do whatever. So I was, I wasn't nervous at all. I was just, I was ready for that moment. And how did it feel like being in between, like just to continue to touch on that again, like to be in between, like Daniel and Grant? Because, I mean, you and you guys, along with Cordell, had like the biggest chances of just like mm-hmm. completely sweeping the yeah, entire field. Yeah, that's all. I, I was hoping it was like, gonna happen. Exactly, it, it almost did. Yeah. So yeah. I'm excited to see what mm-hmm. happens next year. Mm-hmm. So what was it like, you know, like being with them and knowing that, like, hey, like we can, like we can do this. We like do this, this is real. Yeah, yeah. Like, it was comforting in a sense because, like, I, I raced, the, I raced them so much. It was actually interesting. Um, I had one of my best races last year in Berlin. And it was the same thing. Grant was to my left, <laughs> Daniel was to my right, and I was like, "I just got to get out." And I was like, "This is literally I've, I've been prepared. I'm prepared for this moment, type Absolutely, of thing. Like yeah. I've been in this space before, and I can perform in this space, you know." Um, and it was just like, if I just do what I did, then I'll be straight, you know. Right. So it was it was a, it was a comfortable spot. It was a familiar spot, um, and yeah, it was it was it was exciting. It was good, yeah. At what point? Oh, this is my last one. I promise. Uh, (laughs) At what point in the race did you realize that you could place pretty high, like on that? uh, Either get close to the podium or just be right off of it. Um, I think towards the end of the race, um, I don't think I. I think I got out okay. I don't think it was like an amazing start. Um, I think in the middle of the race, I was like, I wasn't like pushing like I, I wanted to like I think I got a little sloppy here and there but then towards the end of the race I felt myself like closing on Daniel a little bit and like I, I literally was closing all the way to the end of the, the race to the finish line and I was like okay like if I keep doing this like it could be good if I'm as long as I'm with one of them I'm not with Grant because he all the way up there <laughs> he all the way up there <laughs> but like like feeling that I was closing on Daniel and Daniel is usually one that's closing so like for me to be like creeping up on Daniel, I was like, "This is a good look. I'm, I'm, I can medal. I can do a lot." And I thought I did medal <laughs> until Hansel. I didn't, even, I didn't yes. see nobody over there. Obviously. That was like, scary, man. Like, oh um, goodness. I thought I medaled until until I realized Hansel was was on the other side. Shout out to Hansel, yeah. but you know he was just like the little villain. That yeah, <laughs> yeah. Made it in, and I was. I, mean, I, you, I feel like he was the one to break you guys up. If yeah. it was anyone, I figured it would be him. Right, right. But o- like, Olympic champ, relax, come on, Hansel. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he had to put on for his homeboy because right, right. He, I think exactly. he had the world lead too, mm-hmm. and then unfortunately he ended up. I wanted him to race him. so bad, like, I know. like and you Grant just was want... giving him some encouraging yeah. words too. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So I would like to know now that you've ended fourth in the world, mm-hmm. how does this have you looking into the future going into the Olympics? Right. So um, it's been a it's been a crazy journey. Twenty twenty two was kind of my breakout year. I ran a, a PB after four years and I ran 13 flat and it was like, okay, like I'm putting some of the pieces together. And even this year, um, it's been another year of like taking what we learned in 2022 and like just trying to be a little bit better. Um, and I, I have a, a unique perspective of like what worked, what didn't work, what was good, what was bad. And like, I just have a better scope of what makes me feel the best. You know, I really haven't had that great of a season in terms of like my performances, like my performances have been like, kind of mid like I haven't really had any breakout performances and stuff and um 
it wasn't really making sense why until like after my race in London we like took a step back like figured out what what was going wrong and this and that and we did and that's why I was able to come here and like feel even better and and based on what I've been running this year I probably would have got like sixth or seventh in in the final you know but because we took that time to figure some stuff out like I was able to perform even higher, you know. So this year, I feel like we've learned so much. I have that formula narrowed down even more. And, like, I just know, like, um, from my performances, like, I've gotten a little bit more research. I'm probably going to be tier funded at USATF. Yay. And, um, insurance. Yeah, insurance, Woo! health insurance. Um, yes, sir. Yeah. I got a huge, a huge blessing from uh, U.S. Track and Field Foundation this year. Nice. And they have been... My, when I tell you my jaw dropped, when I saw my name on that list, yo, and my wife, too, I was just like, yo, this changes so much for us. You going to add her on your insurance? She she already on my insurance. <laughs> she, she already <laughs> on it. <laughs> she, that was the main thing. She was like, you got insurance, lady? <laughs> <laughs> so, like, yeah, that, that, that has been huge, just knowing that, like, I have the medical stipend. I have medical funding. I can go to Colorado Springs if anything happens. Like, like knowing that I have those things and narrowing down, like, what works and what doesn't work. Next year is going to be scary. It's going to be scary. I am so excited yeah. to see you. And you're out in Arizona mm -hmm. with Tim. Uh, That's hometown for you, ain't it? <laughs> That's hometown. I don't know how you're doing it, training in that heat. Like, how what? How early or late do you guys practice? <laughs> yeah. summer Tim's crazy. Yeah. Summertime, we have to go late. We go, like, 5.30 p.m., like, after sunset. Sounds about accurate. Mm -hmm. Because if we go during the daytime. Rats. Ain't no way, Jose. Ain't, ain't no way. Ain't no way. Hey, no way. Would you prefer the evening or the morning? Um, I like the evenings because it it's easy to like replicate like race, race time. It's like this is when we when we run during races, it's evening, like you kinda get your body used to just relaxing and chilling, eating, hanging out until it's race time. So I think it's good for the summertime. In the fall, um we usually go a little bit earlier and it's better then. But in the summer it's it's fine going in the evening for sure. How do you like training with Tim? Be careful I, what you say. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will say, um, I love him to death. I love him to death. That is that's my dog. Like um he's one of my best friends. We talk about everything. Um we've really gotten gotten really close the past 5 years. He's he is such crazy. An awesome dude. Crazy. That man is crazy. I've yeah, workouts. seen his workouts. Yeah. What is the hardest workouts that he has had you do? Oh man. My my least favorite workout is 3 by 350. <clears throat> 3 by 350. <clears throat> Ouch! That Sound just, like some cool that just would make me yeah. do. hurt my yeah. chest and, and yeah. three by three fifty to uh, so many other yeah. people. And I we, feel and like, we, like eh, it's okay. Flashbacks. Yeah, we we work our way down. Like we start off going like slow four fifties, like then we pick it up a little bit. But by the end of the like the, uh -huh. the training block, it's like three by three fifty, all out, full rest. But wait, you a hurdler though. You don't do the four <laughs> hurdles or nothing. Like, I know every coach is like okay, different. Right. You know Tim, Tim is crazy. I know Coach okay. Green is crazy. Okay, because okay. there's some stuff I see. I'm like, there's no way. No, I mean that you, you're making you talk about Coach Green, and I know all you've told me some of his workouts. But I have literally sat and watched Tim train high schoolers, and I look at Tim yeah. like Tim. And what? you know what's funny? He, he, if he were here, he would say, "To be honest, we haven't run that many yet." <laughs> I'm like, oh, bro. <laughs> We've done this workout three times, which isn't a lot. If we have like, let's say we have like 40 weeks of training, right? If we have three sessions of three, it's not a lot, but like they, what you that remember, pain will you know, you remember, forever. It, you know, um, the, P the PTSD. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, that's, that's definitely the, the craziest, the craziest work. It, it hurts so much. Like I'd be, I'd be screaming at my, I'd be like. I'd be cussing them out. <laughs> I'm like, you got me messed up, Tim. You really got me out here running. And what she, what she <laughs> said that you that you or Charlie was, I'm, I'm going to just go home. Look, I'm going to just walk out. I'm the athlete that I'll be <laughs> like, yeah. hey, coach, I'm going to go home because I don't know what you thought this. I'm a long jumper now. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even sprint no more. So why are you making me try to do 300? First of all, the fact that I was doing 400, 350, 300, and I looked at him like, sir, the I run 60 meters, <laughs> barely that. Like, what are, what are we really doing here? Yeah. But, uh, I mean, Good. since you've been in Arizona, I got to ask, like, what restaurant's your favorite so far? Ooh. Um, Harumi Sushi. Ooh, that's a good one. That's one of my, that's my favorite sushi roll in the world. The Oh, oh My God roll from that's there. A, that's Harumi a good sushi. spot. Um, have you ever had Bacanora? No, I haven't. Yo. 
Delicious. He said, "Go catch a flight." I need to go. Go I can't catch a even. Flight. I can't even explain. I'll be home soon. Literally, if you try to go there, they're like, "You can't come here." <laughs> you literally. They only. Make they, you can't. You can't even make. Res- they make reservations on the first of every month, and they're gone in thirty minutes. So how you got up in there? Noted. Well, you. I, you I four, did it. Well, you the fourth fastest oh, I, man in the world. I got a credential. I got a bill. You got a credential. Show up like. What so, do you mean? So so the only way the only way I got it so um the the my job G Road um nonprofit shout out to them um <laughs> um we did a um an event we do our yearly our annual like fundraising event and we had a bunch of food catered to the event Bacanora was one of them oh. and they had food for us there. When I tell you I had 12 plates of their, like, steak, t- literally 12 of them. Like, I don't even care if I'm full at this point. Like, because they brought their grill. It just grill. so good. They, like, they, like, they, like, um, they had the flank steaks. They, like, had the limes they were cooking right in front of you. And, like, it was fresh, like, flank steak oh, with their, like, so special good. seasoning. So they killed the cow in the back? Literally, literally, Dang, literally. <laughs> Peter about to come get We're you. We're back in Jamaica, huh? Peter about to come get him. Yeah, ba- cow, Bacanora for sure, for sure. For sure. I feel like I had a place recently, though. Actually, I went to a place. There's this new place called um, Latha, L-A-T-H-A. Okay, it's new, so I probably definitely ain't yeah, got it yet. I went there. I could t- We could talk about food. We're going to have to change day. the subject. <laughs> I can sit here talking about food. Yeah, my, my wife and my, my like a bunch of my close friends, we went to um, Latha for my birthday a couple weeks ago, a few weeks ago. And um, it's like a pan-African Ooh. restaurant. Like mm. everything from the black diaspora. Oh, that they have different foods good. there, like Caribbean food, yeah. African food. I need, to, I need to pop out. They okay. had like American soul food there too. So when we okay. going, Jasmine? Yo, I'm like, look, I'll be in Arizona soon. Yo, so I know I'll be exactly there. where I'm going. I'll be there. Yo, <laughs> Man, I'm like okay. Yeah, okay. so though, I would say those top three. I would say Hirumi, Bacanora. Hirumi's number three. Bacanora's number two. Latha, Latha is number one for sure. Make sure you go try Ocean Blue. Ocean Blue? It's a Jamaican spot. Oh, no. I thought it was like, I thought you were talking about like, oh, they have like Ocean 44, Steak 44. Mm-mm, this is a Jamaican spot. It's in huh. Chandler. It's real good. Ocean Blue. Mm-hmm. Huh. Okay. Mm-hmm. Hop on it. Is it still there? Because I know all the Jamaican it's spots. Still, it's still there. It's still there. It's it, on it don't, show, it don't show up on maps, huh? It does. Look it's, it up. What's Where your phone at? <laughs> look at look at our look map right now. Six thousand miles away. <laughs> Who's the real Arizonian in this room? <laughs> look, it's down Kyrene. Uh huh. It's on like I think it's is. Chandler and Kyrene. While you look, oh, it's in Chandler. Uh huh. Oh, that makes sense. Uh huh. I'm not close to Tan- so Chandler. So you at all. just gotta you just gotta take it down. But while you look that up, I gotta ask a question about our women's hurdles finalists today. Ooh. What are your thoughts? Um. I think Kenny ran her prelim crazy. Mm-hmm. Bobby said she ready to run fast. Look good. Her semi didn't look that good though. She I looked. She looked that. like she. She. I think she tried to run hard, but it looked like it was very hard for her to run. Run. Run fast in the in the semi. I think you can never count count out uh, Nia. Nia right. Ali. Mm-hmm. She is a gamer. She is a gamer. Um, Jasmine got some momentum going too. Um, I don't think Toby gonna be hitting on nothing. <laughs> well, okay, so really, I was, in, I was in my track group chat last uh-huh. night, and one of my friends was like, "One hit wonder, she ain't doing nothing." I was like, "Before, before all the mess went down, uh-huh. with like her being man, like that yeah. same day, she ran a really, really great mm-hmm. race." Now I know, like, I, we don't know what's been going on with like training and like her mental state mm-hmm. while she had to sit around and wait. But I'm just saying, like, yeah. it, it only takes one race to, yeah. to make something happen. I think I think with, with championships, it comes on, it comes down to how you feel in that weekend, mm-hmm. um, and how you manage the rounds. Like, um, like um, when I saw her prelim race, she didn't she didn't look, she looked like she was trying to run hard, mm-hmm. but she just she just didn't look like she was like if you look at her from last year, if you look at her prelim, her semi, she was she was getting better each round, you know, um, and I think that's what it's about. Like if you can like sustain yourself. And continually be like progressive and competitive each round. I think whoever can be the the cleanest and the most competitive in the final is usually one that's gonna win. And I think that's definitely true because I mean we've been talking about the women's hurdles like all year. Like mm-hmm. they mm-hmm. have just elevated themselves, Phenomenal. and yeah. it's gotten to the point to like 
everybody in their mama is fast, but it's like that race that day. Yeah. Like, yeah. what are you going to be mm-hmm. able to produce? Like, are you a competitor? Because we right. all know that y'all can run between mm-hmm. 12, two and 12, four. Right. And like, we never know what the winning time is going to be. But like you said, if it's not clean, if mm-hmm. you're not, if your rhythm isn't correct, if you're worried about other people, if you're tripping over hurt, like there's no room for error right. in like the women's hurdles right. right now. The unique thing though, and we were talking about this, the men, we had a prelim on Sunday. And then we had semis. And I was going to mm-hmm. ask that. Yeah. That was about to be my I've, question. So what are your thoughts on that? My thoughts are like, like it makes it a little bit more difficult to predict because like you can recover after 24 hours and come back and be completely different. You know, right. if they have semis and finals on one day, then it's like you kind of know where they at based on how the semifinal went. But if you got 24 hours to recover and yeah. get treatment and make sure you're good, shake out, like get the nerves out, like, yeah. It's anybody's it's game a, at this it's point. It's a different. It's a recovered. different conversation. So, like, I I couldn't even I couldn't even guess. As a hurdler, what what would you prefer? Would you prefer to just have the semi and final that day, oh. or I, I like semi and final because yeah. just it's just like practice. Like you got one rep, or you got you got multiple reps, right? Mm-hmm. And for me, at least, I usually run better on the second rep because like the first one is like kind of like a blowout, like getting your body primed and amped up for that, and then you come back. Okay, I got one more. I got to hit it. You know. Um, and I guess you can you can simulate that in your warm up. Um, you can have like a, a six a six hurdle rep or something before you go out, but like it's just not the same. You know, the adrenaline is the adrenaline, all adrenaline, like the competition. Yeah. You got people beside you. There's stakes. There's risk. You know. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, I would definitely prefer to have semi and final on the same day for sure. I'm with you on that. If yeah. you could pick your top three based off what you saw yesterday, who's your top three? I'm gonna say. In order, I want gold, silver, bronze. I'm gonna say, dang. I'm gonna say Nia Ali, world champ, okay. again. I'm gonna say Jasmine Silver, and I'm gonna say Kenny Harrison for bronze. Technically, that's a U.S. sweep. So it is a U.S. sweep. Right, it is. So it is. A well, no, it's not because I mean, Jasmine. Jasmine gonna get second. Jazz, technically, Jazz, I mean, technically, yes. <laughs> and, and I mean, you went to school out here, like, yeah. you, we claim me. But <laughs> to be honest, I'm gonna I'm say Jasmine and Nia can both, they can flip flop. Jasmine mm-hmm. can you go, Nia can get second, or or vice versa. But so I'm gonna just that's say, that's fair. Yeah. What's one thing that you've seen about Nia, like, either racing this entire season or racing through rounds that made you be like, okay, like, this can be her gold medal. It's just her consistency. You know, like, she's been in the game for a while. She, she's been through the ringer, you know. She's been in high-pressure moments, and she's performed, you know. Um, and I think as a as a younger hurdler, like somebody like Jasmine, you see Nia, she – she can come on the scene at, at come on the scene at any time and perform. You know, just like me, at, yeah. me looking at Hansel Parchment, Olympic champ. He's been in very, very high stakes situations. He can show up at any moment and run 13-0. You know, like I'm never gonna sweep that under the rug. So it's kind of the same thing, you know. And Jasmine, she has to be on on her game. You know, yeah. she has to be on her game to like to take it. You know, um, and she can, she can, um, but it's just a matter of, it's a matter of doing it. You know, and now. That stadium is loud. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I want to know what is the experience like being down on the track? Because in the stands, it's loud, but I know it's amplified times 10 down. Yeah, there. it's it's different. It's different. Like, um, I've been in loud stadiums. There's a huge stadium in Poland. Um, I did, like, um, World Relays in Yokohama, like, huge stadiums. But, like, to be on that track for world championships with those stakes involved, it's just, like, <laughs> It's heavy. It's heavy. So it's just like, I don't know. It's just like, like, it's all or nothing. It's all or nothing. It's fight or flight. Fly or fold. I don't know. As many, as many, yeah, as many I alliterations like that, that you can come up with. with yeah. Like. yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's just, it's, it's a very, very, like, different experience. Can you guys hear the stadium from the practice track? Some if you really listen for it, it was, it was far enough away to where if you're not if you're not like paying attention, you can't hear it. But like I definitely like pulled up on the bus and like got off and I was like, oh shoot, I can hear, I can hear the stadium all the way over here across the track. But um, they also had music playing on the track. They had like speakers and stuff on the oh, okay. track, so like it's easy to get distracted and like you also try not to get hit by everybody running on the track. Yeah, so you're distracted yeah. enough. Um, so yeah, yeah. 
So the last couple of things that I want to talk to you about is because you are not just an amazing athlete, but I heard from a little birdie named Carl Merber about some of the cool stuff that you and your wife do together and some mm-hmm. of the stuff that you're interested in yeah. um, with content creation, shooting mm-hmm. weddings with yep. your wife is yep. pretty cool. Like you got a podcast. So just talk to us about who you are outside of track and field. Outside of track, um, I do a lot of things. I video game a lot. Um, I do video and I work at a nonprofit called G Row. It kind of all blended together, to be honest. Um, COVID um, track was canceled. wasn't really We were training, but we weren't really training. Like training because there weren't any meetings. Like this is pointless. So I ended up gaming a lot. But then you can only do so much of that. So I was mm. like, I need to do something productive. Like my my roommate at the time, Jared, he's like hustling, making money, he's like <laughs> doing this, and I'm just like on the game. Like what, I'm a broke what you what you over there doing? He's like, bro. I'm doing this class I'm, I'm on like, that like, like, you're not trying to get on playstation and, he's, and it just got old quick so i was like i need to i need to pick up something productive during all this time so i picked up a camera and um i started doing more videos like track videos i, I bought a drone started flying my drone around and i really grew a passion for it especially like workout videos and like telling stories and like i just feel like we just have so many cool stories and track. like you guys know like yeah there's so many stories and like they're just not being captured and um, that's something that I definitely wanted to explore. And, like, I'm still trying to fit it in when I can. Um, and that's how the the podcast was born. Even COVID, I, I tried to start, like, a docu-series of, like, um, I think I called it, like, World's Greatest Humor. It's on my YouTube. It's not that popping. I did an um, interview with the uh, world record holder in the hurdles, Aries Merritt. Because yep. he lives in Phoenix. Man, I love Aries. Yeah, that's my yeah. dog. That's my dog. <laughs> so, like, I asked him. I was like, yo, can I do an interview with you? I'm doing this docu-series, this and that. And uh, he was like, oh, yeah, for sure. Like, I'll do it. And, like... I did one episode with him. Then I did one with Jared Eaton, my close mm-hmm. friend, because they were in proximity. And I was just like, I love telling these stories, you know. Um, you got to get you a role on Sidious Bag. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> please, please. This is your interview right now, <laughs> yeah. actually. Right now. <laughs> please, please do. That would be amazing. Um, and, like, yeah, video just, I've just always been interested in it since then. Like, just watching other creators. There's a guy on Insta- on uh, YouTube that I, that I watch named J.R. Alley. And I watched one of his videos and like literally just got chills watching his edits and like I was like, okay, this is what I'm doing. Like, you know, you know how you just yeah, find something, yeah. you just like, yo, yeah, this that would be dope, this. you know. And it just kind of went on from there. Like, I, I practiced editing, like doing my little workout videos, this and that. And then my wife was like, you know, you wanna, um, my friend is getting married and like, you wanna do do a do a video for that? You wanna come to this wedding? I'm like, sure. She's like, okay, we're going to Hawaii. Whoa, Whoa. <laughs> Hawaii! Wow. Whoa. Let me go pack my bag. You sure they want me to do video in Hawaii? I like ah, uh, no experience. Yeah, really. literally. Like. And she was like, "Yeah, they want you to come do." I was like, yeah, "I guess we in it." I so I went there, literally jumped in the fire, and they loved the video. And I think that's where that's where it started, you know. And I was like, "Okay, I, I think I could do it." I did a couple more weddings here and there. The couples loved the wet, loved the wedding videos that I put together, and I was like, "Okay, I can do this," you know, and um. And that's kind of where we're at. I think I've done like five or six weddings at this point. Um, I'm not going to lie. I'm not crazy about doing the weddings because like <laughs> it's really just watching them kiss, watching a couple kiss a bunch of times and like watching some people like get drunk at a reception and like, okay, but they be oh, lit though. They they be do, it, it is very fun. I will say like, I do enjoy doing it, but like, I feel like my, my passion behind video is, is storytelling. Yeah, you know, like, yeah. And I'm like attached to like the emotion and the process and the, and all that stuff that that comes with storytelling. So you got to film like the leading up to the wedding, like the yeah, like, the yeah, 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 right, right, right. yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> so that that's what I, that's what like scratches the itch for me, you know. Um, and I just feel like I'm just kind of going back and forth between that. Like, I do love doing weddings, but like I I love storytelling more. Um, but also that gets put on the back burner when I'm like I'm racing and stuff. Um, and then um, through that I like got a job at a broadcasting studio. Mm. Um, I just did this this short term like once a week for a month like video class for like some kids. I like took them to the studio and I kind of helped out. And um, I got introduced to the director of Giro, the nonprofit that I work for now. And like I did a media program for some kids at a, uh, the Boys and Girls Club. Like kind of introduced them to my camera. Oh, this is how you do a news presentation. You guys can write your own stories. Then we will record them. You can tell us why you like LeBron, who's Aww, gonna win the finals, that's this so and that. Cute. And um, I did that for a while. And then um, just working with, with Danny, we just did different programs around Phoenix. 
um, he got connected with Phoenix District One, and they liked what we were doing, and they were like, "We want to invest in G Road," and they like gave us funding to work directly with the school district. Nice. So like because I was attached to Daniel and G Road, like yeah. we like got elevated, and now we're like in the schools every day with the kids. Like we give them a free program from three to six every day. Yeah. Like families have child care until 6 p.m. every day that's perfect oh, that's awesome. you know and that, changing the world yeah, ex- yeah and it feels good it you know yeah it's it's it's, it's super exciting because like it's one of those things like you ever have that feeling where like you could be good at something but like you never had the chance to try it yeah. mm-hmm. you know I love giving that feeling to kids like like I've met some kids where I like give them a camera and they just light up and they're just like oh like i want to do film i want to do this i want to do news like it's just different programs like that yeah. we just give those programs yeah. to kids so they can find and help them be prepared for life like if you know what you like then you can kind of direct your life a little bit more and um yeah that's 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 pretty much how all of that unfolded it's a whole whirlwind <laughs> of stuff I, outside of i yeah. love that because also a lot of people don't realize that although you have support you're not necessarily sponsored by a major shoe brand Mm -hmm. right and a lot of the times to make it to this level you need those resources to have help and the fact that you're giving back i love that Mm -hmm. what does it mean to you the fact that you really haven't had you know that money the the financial side of Mm -hmm. it to get here and now you're here like that's a lot of hard work and dedication it feels good it feels good and and it's something that i've had to learn it's like it's easy to, to compare what you don't have and like, like just be upset about it. It's just, but the thing that I learned, it, it takes a lot of joy from it. So I've had to find joy in what I'm doing. I had to ask myself the question. I literally just had this conversation with one of my, my teammates. Like, why am I doing this? Like, why am I de- de- devoting so much time to track and field? And when you find the answer to that question, then you can say, okay, then I should keep doing it or I should stop. Like, if I'm doing this because I want to make a lot of money, you don't need to be doing it <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> because you're just going to be mad for a long. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but like if you if you do it because you love it and you want to achieve a goal for yourself or you want to. I don't know, like master a craft that you've had since you were a child, then OK, then maybe you should do it, you know, and that kind of like scaled it back. Like it was easy to go to practice, easy to enjoy. And it's like if I'm going to keep doing this, I have to sustain myself, too. And like, yeah, in order to do this, I need to do this, too, you know, and um, just the way like my support system and my family and my friends like kind of like bought into that, too. Mm-hmm. It's allowed me the opportunity to like do just a bunch of things that I enjoy right. and have success in them while I'm doing it. So it it, it kind of happened in a roundabout way because I definitely stumbled through it for a long time, like yeah. injury and like being broke and like not having a job. I worked at warehouses. I worked at GameStop. Mm-hmm. I worked at, I was doing Ubering. I was, I was doing so much stuff and it's like, oh, I'm not making enough money and it's not enjoyable. And like, I like track, but I'm not making, so it, was, it, it yeah. took a while to get to a point where it's like, this system works. But like, now that I have it, it's like, okay, I'm, I'm good and I'm enjoying, I'm at peace and like, I think success will come after all of that, you know? Yeah. I mean, clearly you found the right path because Mm -hmm. it's gotten you this far, which is amazing, especially being able to find that peace in all of it and understanding why, why am I doing this? I think that's such an important question to be able to ask yourself. Like, Mm -hmm. why am I truly doing this? Because you're correct. If you're in this just to make money, like, mm -mm. no, look, Yep. So everybody in the comments, go and drop. What's your why? Why do you why, love track why, and field? Why? Why? Answer why your do you why. Why do you run <laughs> track and field? Why do you love Sidious Mag? Why do and you love me? Before, oh my gosh! And before uh, we let you go, I have one last question. We asked you earlier if you're staying throughout the rest of champs. Mm-hmm. You'll be here through the rest of champs. We got a few more events that are going on. Mm-hmm. What event are you most excited to watch that's left? Um. Um, let's see. I need to check the competition schedule. <laughs> I need to check. I need to check what we got left. Um, I'm excited for the 200. Uh, that's tonight, right? Semis. Semis. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm excited for the 200. I'm excited for the four by one. Mm. See who's going to be on that thing. Um, I'm excited for uh, the 400 meter, the women's 400 meter hurdles. Um, that's tonight. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited yeah, for a lot. Yeah, I'm excited I'm for a excited lot. You know, every single event. Um, it's fine because we're super excited because here at Sidious, we love track and field. Mm-hmm. And we're a whole bunch of track nerds. <laughs> period. But Freddie, thank you so much for coming on the of show. Course. And 
appreciate you proud of you thank you so much yep can't wait to see what's to come in the future mm-hmm. any last words caitlin i love tracking you <laughs> <laughs> thank you for having me i appreciate it e6 sound mind sound body 365 days one year until history is made a lifetime of preparation that will lead us to the ultimate test 365 days until we show the world what a sound mind and a sound body can do see you in paris stability never felt better the first five miles you're just getting warmed up from downtown to uptown you'll take the scenic route tired legs you'll feel fresh from first steps to final strides steep hills super steep hills long runs even longer runs whatever comes you can run through it with stability cushioning and more comfort than ever in every step because nothing feels better than the adaptive stability and premium comfort of the Gel Keano 30 shoe